I think I would say that van life starts now. Hi, I'm Mia and this is Bob. We have been working on converting our Ford Transit for the last year and at last she is habitable enough for us to embark on our life of adventure. Join us for the highs, we did it, <laughs> lows, that was probably one of the most stressful, difficult and disastrous drives of my life and unexpected aspects of van life as we brave the unknown and discover new horizons yeah yeah next pose yeah You are on camera. Hello. So we are going for a Welsh extravaganza. And so um, my parents have bought us some walkie-talkies. And I've made a little chart of how to use our walkie-talkies because I've coloured in all of the buttons. Because um, they're not very good at seeing things anymore. They need glasses and stuff. So I thought if we colour-coded the buttons that would help. So facilitating my parents. Um, we've got a route overview. And... Printed on double sided, obviously, to save the planet. The first place we are going to is Marlborough. So we are off to Marlborough to Figgins Lane Car Park. And apparently, Marlborough is a very beautiful place. We haven't been there before. But um, this is part of our Welsh progress. So we are going to Marlborough, Tinton, good thing I've got it written down, Sugarloaf Mountain. Then we are going to a cottage. Um, in Wales with a website called The Cottage Company and they have loads of beautiful cottages and I highly recommend you check them out because they're awesome and pretty reasonably priced for what they are and then after the cottage we're going to the Skirid Mountain Inn which is apparently the oldest inn in Wales and it's where Shakespeare sat next to a fire and created the character of Puck then we're going to travel the Gospel Pass which is an ancient pilgrimage to lots of different abbeys um, and we're finishing at Hay on Y. Then we're going to Brecon. Then we're going to Vossilly. And then we are back to Marlborough. And then me and Rob are off to see friends. And my parents are off to New Forest. So this is the longest trip that we've ever done in the van. I'm really excited about it. And I'm so excited I actually took to Google Docs and made an itinerary. Which we can keep forever. So yay. <laughs> it so, marks yeah. our first outing in our sort of it's like we're, we're you know we're not fully done no i'm stood next to a shower <coughs> that looks like this right now that's not a shower yet but this kind of marks the start of the beginning doesn't it it does i think um once we've done this it's kind of official that we we're living in the van um but we'll be using facilities such as showers um well only showers really um, and maybe laundry ma laundromats, is that what they're called? Yeah. Washerias, or whatever they're called, um, to do our laundry and stuff. So I think, um, I think I would say that van life starts now. Yeah. Which makes yeah. emotions, it's a bit scary. Pop our little Lego friends back on their yeah. stands, so they're travel ready, and then we're gone. And that's it. Oh, I wonder if they can, like, sit... Well, yeah, seatbelts on. Yeah, seatbelts on. Was it the Louis Theroux? Gotta stay alive. You know, you know. <laughs> um, let me get this. 
Thanks to Anna, our friend, for Austin, the dinosaur. Lovely. <laughs> and we've also got John and Darren. Oh yeah, thank you to Darren for making our sign. The new addition is John. Can we have John up the top? John's coming up the front. He's so soft. And he's made of 100% recycled plastic. Beep, beep, beep. Very cute. John. Alright. I think I think that's all I've got to say. But let's do. Buckle up. Let's go for an adventure. up in a place called Marlborough which is a beautiful oldie worldie town and I managed to spend over £30 on olives because of this happy chappy. So I have a question for you Mia, hmm. who's just been on a Wikipedia or equivalent. Is this the widest street market? Unfortunately no. But there are claims that it is. Yes. But not anymore but once upon a time after the rebuild from the fire in 1653, they claimed we've now got the widest street for a market. It just wasn't the case, but some people were happy about it. Yeah, I like that that was the competition. Mm. It's a wide street. I think they said it was the second widest street, wasn't it? Pretty good. Let's go explore. Marlborough is a beautiful place and we cannot wait to return. Having driven to Marlborough the previous day, we were able to make the most of the local amenities such as the unisex public toilets and the waitrose, which was really helpful for us to stock up on needed resources for the rest of our adventure. But it was all too soon, time to say goodbye to Marlborough and continue for the horizon. Looking <laughs> cool! So we have just arrived in Wales. Our original plan was to park in Tintin. Um, by the Abbey but it was really busy even the overflow park, car park so then we tried to park at somewhere else I can't remember where it was what about the nearby car park? the, the wiry car park? the wire car park? wire yard or something wire yard. Like something that makes wires um, but that was full too so now we are at the forge car park which is quite small but um, there was enough space for little turtle I say little she's like six meters long um, but it was lovely and it's really lovely here and what's really sweet is loads of people are coming to visit um, the forge which is an old like almost like a heritage thing like it's it's like a ruins of a forge I'll show you um, as I'm talking so as you can see probably right now as I'm editing this um, it's, it's the ruins of an old forge and I think after lunch 
um, there's a little sign so we can go and tell you a little bit about it because I feel like this place you know deserves a little tribute because um, it saved our bacon 100% so um, once Bob's finished lunch we might go and have a little investigate and see what we can show you guys too but it wasn't such a hard drive it was lovely from Mulba to here and there's a few what I refer to as like Welsh roads which are like tiny little lanes but um, they're fine like we've got a reversing camera so if the worst comes to worst we can just reverse so that's fine um, and now it's lunch time <laughs> Y Valley and we have parked up at the Furnace car park because the other two car parks were busy and we thought that we should do a little tribute to this space because it basically saved our lives. So why was this furnace built in this secluded spot? The furnace was part of a production line for the Tintin Wireworks which stretched along the valley. Initially the Wireworks brought in special Osmond iron they needed to make wire but exasperated by un- what does that mean? Unscrupulous iron makers. Who tried to control the supply, they built this furnace in 1650. It was built against a bank so that the charcoal and ore could be carried straight from the store house at the higher level and loaded into the top of the furnace. Water from the... Angidi. ...was diverted to drive a water wheel which powered the bellows. Give me an interested face. <laughs> I should have worn my sandals, I could have walked up it. I uh, have the fat one. Are they coming? No, the old one's gone, mine got stuck. Oh no! <laughs> I missed it! I was in the lead. Oh! Oh yeah! Oh, good one. Thank <laughs> you. 